Hi, my name is Tommy. I'm one of the practitioners with the Primary Mental Health Support Service, part of Cardiff and Vale University Health Board. Welcome to this Action for Living online course. We usually run this course in a lecture style format to attend in person. However, due to social distancing measures in response to COVID-19, we are unable to offer this and have therefore adapted it into an online version for the time being. We hope you find this helpful. To start with today, I'd like to emphasise that it's currently a particularly tough time with a lot of changes to adapt to. Hopefully some of the skills taught on this course may be able to help, especially at the moment. This is an educational course. It will teach you new skills, though they might not immediately overcome your difficulties and will take some time to master. Try to view all the videos and practice as much as you can using the exercises provided. Though this is just for you and we won't ask you to share your work. This course will introduce you to Acceptance and Commitment Therapy, or ACT. ACT is a therapy that explores links between thoughts, feelings and actions, and encourages us to increase our mental and behavioural flexibility in order to support us in living a life that feels more meaningful. It might seem counterintuitive at times, but if you remain open and curious, you might find this is helpful for you. The course borrows from the work of Dr. Russ Harris and his book, The Happiness Trap. You can find more details on our website. The course is normally made up of four sessions, each of which has been split into two videos. Here you can see what the course will cover. Hopefully by the end of the first session, you'll have the beginning of an understanding of ACT and how it can help you at this time. With each session, there's a handout summarising the content discussed and also providing opportunities to practise the skills and techniques introduced. You can find this handout and any other recommended resources on our website. The first session deals with how we might move in the direction of experiencing less suffering. It begins now with this video, which is part one. So let's get started. We all seek happiness, yet from day one, pain has been a part of our lives coming into a world that's too cold, too bright, too loud. We don't often notice the absence of pain, but really notice it when we do feel pain, such as feeling unwell, cutting your finger, losing something you care about, going to the dentist. The reality is life involves pain, and unfortunately there's no getting away from that. As these statistics show, pain in the form of mental health problems is widespread. Take a moment to take them in. So when we talk about pain, we aren't just talking about physical pain, but also something more emotional. A sense of loss, fear, rejection of some sort. And it's important to remember these things aren't distinct. You can have both physical and emotional pain all at once. And the fear of experiencing pain can itself be profoundly painful for us. Something many of us are experiencing in relation to a fear of catching COVID-19. Pain can become a big barrier 
that might stop us from living the life we thought we would lead. It's often unpleasant, but it can be helpful. Pain has an important function of letting us know if something is dangerous, like if we touch something hot by mistake. It can tell us that something is wrong. This is true of both physical and emotional pain. Pain can be helpful, but it's not always avoidable. The good news is that we can learn skills to reduce its impact and to create a meaningful life for ourselves despite our pain. So where to begin? Well, pain itself is not the full picture. So the first thing that we're going to discuss is a major distinction that ACT makes between pain and suffering. Pain is what we feel when something bad happens to us. Suffering, on the other hand, is the result of our thoughts about how wrong this is, how it shouldn't have happened, how we shouldn't have done it, how it proves that we and life are bad. It is self-generated and self-maintained. For example, I could feel anxious about recording this, and that's a clear pain response to the here and now. But the moment I start thinking about how I shouldn't be anxious, I'm adding suffering to the pain of my anxiety. So while pain hurts, it's the struggle with or non-acceptance of pain that causes suffering. But what might this struggle look like? If you've ever been caught in quicksand, you probably thrashed around and ended up sinking faster and deeper. This is an instinctive reaction to getting stuck. Apparently, the best way to escape is to simply relax and spread your arms and legs to float to the top and then try to gently pull yourself free. I imagine this would be quite difficult, but letting go of all of that thrashing around, of that struggle, and accepting that there is pain, that you are in quicksand, will quite paradoxically let you float to the top and be able to not feel so much pain. It isn't giving up, even if it feels that way, or it looks like that, it actually saves you. We'll talk a bit more about acceptance later. If we think pain is a threat, then we will either try to fight it, or take flight from it. You might have heard of the fight or flight system, it's an automatic reaction to a threatening situation or painful stimulus. For many of us, we can feel like we want to fight against or run away from the current lockdown and social distancing rules. And it's important to recognise that this is a natural reaction to the experience of the situation. Sometimes it's like there's a struggle switch at the back of our brains that activates a fight or flight response in relation to our pain. Watch this video called The Struggle Switch by Russ Harris, the author of The Happiness Trap. It often seems like we've got a struggle switch at the back of our mind. And as soon as an uncomfortable emotion, a painful feeling or memory shows up, it's like the, the struggle switch goes on and we start to struggle with it. So let's suppose anxiety shows up. A very common painful emotion that we all get to experience. Anxiety shows up, the struggle switch goes on. Oh, here's anxiety. I don't like anxiety. I want to get rid of my anxiety. 
Now I've got anxiety about my anxiety. So it's getting bigger. With the struggle switch on, I now get, oh, my anxiety is getting bigger. How do I get rid of my anxiety? Now I've got even more anxiety. With the struggle switch on, I may then get angry about my anxiety. Why does this anxiety keep showing up? I hate this anxiety. Then I might even start to feel sad about my anger. Oh, is this my life? Oh, and then I may start to feel guilty about my sadness about my anger. Oh, how pathetic am I when there's starving kids in Africa? So with my struggle switch on, my emotions get amplified. I've now got guilt about my sadness, about my anger, about my anxiety, about my anxiety. And that kind of amplification of emotions gives them more impact and influence over my life and often gets me bogged down or pulls me into self-defeating behaviors. Now, what happens if I can switch off the struggle switch? With the struggle switch off, anxiety shows up and it's not that I like it or want it or approve of it, it's just I'm not going to struggle with it. I'm not going to invest my time, energy, and effort in struggling with this anxiety. Instead, I'm going to invest it in doing meaningful, life-enhancing activities, such as spending quality time with my friends and family, or playing with my kids. Now, with the struggle switch off, the anxiety is free to move. It may get higher, it may get lower, it may move quickly, it may move slowly, but the point is it's free to move. It doesn't get amplified by all of these other emotions which make it kind of bigger and stickier and make it hang around for a lot longer. So there's no such thing as a life without anxiety. It shows up for all of us. But when anxiety shows up and the struggle switch is off, it's so much easier to live with than when the struggle switch is on. So with chronic pain, our response can create suffering. If, for example, the struggle switch is on, we may end up thinking something like, I have to get rid of my pain before I can do anything, and thus avoiding action. Or we might fight against it by trying to live as though it weren't there. You may try and maintain maybe the same level of activity each day, not acknowledging the extra effort and energy day-to-day -day activities require. Where the gardening may have taken you half an hour previously, currently, if you try to do it in half an hour, you would lose days to exhaustion and pain. Perhaps you feel sad. Perhaps you've recently lost something, like a job, something that's important to you. And whenever you feel tearful, you say to yourself, ah, pull yourself together. This attempt to take charge of our pain can often lead us to be quite critical with ourselves. And we may find that we try to bully ourselves into changing with thoughts like, don't be so pathetic, you can handle this, why are you such a crybaby? So our original pain, the sadness we felt, has now become suffering through our excessive attempts at control. We're now sad not just because we've lost something, we're also angry because we don't think we should be sad. Losing a loved one is one of the most painful things we can experience. We might feel guilty about what we did or didn't do and take the original pain of grief and add the suffering of guilt to it. Sometimes we try to avoid the pain through burying ourselves in work, through self-medicating or maybe throwing ourselves into a new relationship. We understand and appreciate that the pain and the struggle is real. The focus of ACT is not about things being right or wrong. It's about focusing on whether something is helpful or unhelpful in living a meaningful life. ACT tells us that pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. So we're not suggesting that we have been choosing to suffer. We know that we're doing our best to cope with situations in 
the way we know how. Instead, ACT teaches us that there's a difference between the two and that we can learn skills to reduce our suffering and make different choices to help with this. By trying to either fight against or flee from our pain, perhaps from the current lockdown and social distancing situation being enforced upon us, we are increasing the amount of suffering in our lives. So even though we can't get rid of pain, it is possible to reduce the suffering associated with it. And that's really what this course is all about. So where does this suffering come from? Well, ACT has a handy acronym for this. FEAR. F is for fusion with experiences, thoughts and feelings. E is for excessive goals. A is for avoidance of discomfort and R is for remoteness from values. Remember, ACT understands suffering as arising from our fight against the unavoidable pain. So these four are the things that we do that add suffering to our pain. So fusion occurs when people strongly believe their thoughts, emotions, memories, and physical sensations are a true and accurate reflection of reality. To demonstrate this, we have a quick exercise now. Think of a recurrent thought that keeps popping into your mind. An example could be, I'm worthless, I'm stupid, I'm not going to pass this exam. As a presenter, I often have the thought, I'm boring everyone. Now think about this thought for the next 20 seconds. And now, in your mind, just rate how strongly you believe this thought on a scale of 0 to 10, with 10 being completely true, 0 being completely untrue. So we're going to try this again for another thought. Now I'd like you to imagine that you're going to be called up to play rugby for Wales in the next international. I'd like you to think about this for another 20 seconds. Perhaps picturing it helps. Now rate how strongly you believe this thought on a scale of 0 to 10. Again, 10 being completely true and 0 being completely untrue. I'm sure that even with the help of this picture, you believe the second thought much less than the first. Yet both were just thoughts, just words and images in your mind. So there is a distinction between a thought and the belief that our thoughts are reality. Fusion, then, is the extent to which we believe our thoughts, emotions, memories, physical sensations as true and accurate reflections of reality. So you are all, I imagine, a lot more fused with the first thought than you were with the one about the rugby. Excessive goals are problematic as they are unrealistic and do not meet our level of resources, things like our time, our energy, our skill and so on. In setting excessive goals, we set ourselves up for failure. So you might have decided that during the lockdown you were going to learn to speak another language, organise your wardrobe, 
learn to play a musical instrument, update your CV, write a novel, start a blog, get fit, do some gardening, start baking, upcycle your furniture, learn to code, learn calligraphy, write a journal, clear out your kitchen cupboards, learn to meditate, use Zoom to conference call your friends and family. How realistic is it that you would do all of these? More importantly, how would you feel if you tried and then couldn't do all of those things? If you'd set out with the firm belief that it was both possible and necessary for you to achieve everything in lockdown, perhaps you'd feel more stressed, frustrated, depressed, disappointed, or even angry at yourself. You would likely feel as though you'd failed or wasted your time or let others down, let yourself down. And that's what having excessive goals does to us. They lead us to overstretch ourselves and then think badly of ourselves for having failed. Avoidance is an unwillingness to make room for the experience of discomfort. This is important and in many ways is the bedrock of ACT. As we've already seen, suffering occurs when we avoid the discomfort of our pain and our tendencies to avoid are connected with the amount we fuse with our thoughts. Rather than trying to do everything, you may have avoided trying something new like video conferencing tools until now because of feelings of discomfort of maybe saying the wrong thing and instead spent your time trying to distract yourself. Some people may have tried to address things but simply not started because the discomfort and now the feeling of guilt is too much. When we lose touch with the values that guide us through life, we lose our motivation to make changes which give our life meaning. This could be that we don't know what's important to us anymore, if indeed we ever did. Or it could be because we mistake other people's values for our own. How many of us do things because maybe our parents told us to or just because our parents did them that way? Maybe we think that others will judge us if we don't. There are many barriers, both internal and external, that can impact on our ability to live a full and meaningful life. And you may already be able to recognise some of these in yourself. Unhelpful thoughts, unhelpful images, unhelpful memories, making comparisons, avoiding discomfort, being uncertain of our values, having goals that are too big, lacking resources, lacking support. You may also start to recognise how they fit into the FEAR acronym. Now, to get from here to where we want to be, we have to dare to face our fear. Notice how we talk about thoughts, images, memories and so forth as unhelpful, rather than true or false or good or bad. This is key to ACT and something that we'll explore further in upcoming sessions. Dare is made up of D for diffusion from experiences, thoughts and feelings. A for acceptance of discomfort. R for realistic goals. And E for embracing values. And this is where we'd like to get to by the end of the course. Diffusion reflects noticing the difference between me and my thinking. This enables us to make the distinction between thoughts and reality. It has a lot in common with something called mindfulness that we'll come back to later. Acceptance is not liking something. It doesn't mean that we're happy to feel anxious or that we don't want our depression to go away. It's not about just accepting it. Rather, it means acknowledging the pain and allowing it to exist without immediately attempting to be rid of it. Remember the quicksand metaphor from earlier? 
This can be a challenge, but we'll cover more on this in future sessions. Goals need to be set in line with our resources. Option one, acquire the necessary resources, the skills, the time, and so forth. Option two, accept the limitations of reality and change our goal to adapt in the best way possible. And finally, that brings us on to embracing our values, which we will explore a little each week, but focus on more in the last two sessions of Act 4. So what is the most important thing to you? What sort of person do you want to be? What imbues your life with meaning? These are all questions we'll come back to. To summarise, we'll be aiming to move from being fused with our thoughts to defusing from thoughts. Rather than having excessive goals, we aim to develop your understanding and ability to set realistic goals. Rather than avoiding discomfort, we're aiming to learn to accept discomfort. And finally, we aim to move from being remote from our values to embracing our values. So this course is made up of four sessions and each is split into two parts over two videos. So in total, there will be eight videos. For each session, there's a handout summarising the content discussed and also providing opportunities to practice the skills and techniques introduced. You can find the handout on our website. I hope you found this first video useful. You can find the next video below, along with some other resources we think would be useful. Russ Harris, the author of The Happiness Trap, has developed some COVID-19 related resources, including a document and video titled Face COVID, that aim to help us respond effectively to the current crisis. I hope you join us again soon.